It's Thursday, February 24th here at the West End Gun Club. It's a bit after 9.30. Uh, it's a lot later than I would show up to the range, but I have the day off from work. Decided to come out just to shoot some pistol because I haven't been shooting pistol as of late. So I figure I'll bring my CCW guns to the range and get a little bit of practice with them and get some rounds down range, you know, just get some repetitions in. Uh, it's, uh, I kind of lag this morning. I would normally just come early in the morning, but it's, we've had a, we want to call it a winter storm here in Southern California uh, or in California in general. And it got really cold, comparatively speaking. It was actually hitting 80 degrees a few weeks ago. And now it dropped down to about 50 right now, 50, 50s uh, Fahrenheit. Out here at the range, I don't have my Kestrel, but it's about high 30s. So it's pretty cold. Um, it's got to stand out in the sun. It should be okay. Uh, but this is, uh, I don't know, a lot of people, I think on previous videos were cracking jokes about how this isn't cold and well if you're in southern california and you're used to you know 80 degree 90 degree weather most of the year this is not normal so anyway we don't really dress for this type of stuff and uh, i don't have many cold weather gear um, i have this i have a thick jacket in there just for emergencies and then i'm wearing this steel got a bunch of layers on right now but it's not too bad anyway uh gonna go ahead and grab some targetry out of the condensed container because i store a couple of my center fire targets in there and I got some of my target stands in the uh, condensed container where I keep the rimfire stuff. Gonna bring it over here and get set up and start shooting. As I mentioned in the beginning of the vlog, we're out here to shoot pistol. I just brought out three of my CCW guns. Uh, one, my G19, which uh, I don't really carry. My G26 is my primary CCW, but this is my G19. And being a person of shorter stature, I was really hesitant on whether or not I could carry this, uh, this pistol. Um, I'm not too concerned about the handle because it does stick out a little bit, but it doesn't really print that much. Uh, I just can, there's ways to conceal that. And so it doesn't look obvious. Uh, my concern was the length of the barrel because in the slide, because you add an extra inch or so compared to a 26. And since I'm shorter than most people, it's uh, when you're bending over or whatever, you're sitting down, it does have a tendency to, it could jab into your kind of your the pelvic bone or wherever on your body. So uh, I've been sort of kind of messing around with carrying the G19. And I figured out a way to carry it. It's not too uncomfortable. And it's nice to have sort of a, a larger size gun because it's easier to carry. It's easier to shoot the G19 than it is 26. There's no doubt about that. Um, this is kind of like the all-purpose gun. It, it's great as a kind of a service pistol, but at a four-inch barrel, roughly a four-inch barrel. It's, uh, it's also good for uh, just the way it handles and uh, easier to just... It feels more intuitive than a, than a subcompact. So it's nice to to try to carry the G19. Um, anyway, that being said, I did also bring out my my 26, which I have in here. Uh, I'm gonna post, I'm gonna write an article on this. I'm still kind of composing it, but this is a Haley Strategic Flat Pack, which I haven't been using uh, until recently because, you know, work from home or whatever, as my, my work style, more work lifestyle has changed and I don't really carry my big GR1 Go Ruck uh, backpack anymore. I've been using this as kind of my when I'm out of the house type bag. And what I did with this flat pack is I added this gray ops gear. Um, sorry, a bunch of my mags are in here. But let me take these out first. But I have this gray ops gear or is it gray ops? No, it's a uh, gray man tactical. Sorry, mixing those two companies up. So a little Molly panel, but on that Molly panel, I have a, a fixture for a holster and these carry the, in, uh, the G code, the G-code holsters, which I do use for outside the waistband. And it's got that uh, interface. I can't remember what this is called off, uh, off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, this interfaces with their with their uh, holsters of this 
of this platform. Sorry, RTI, thank you. RTI platform, it just came in my head. And uh, essentially you can just put that in there, lock it in place, and the RTI panel's on the, on the Smalley panel. But basically this allows me to have this inside here. If I need to do off-body carry, I can secure a holster in here it's, and it stays in there. And you know, you can yank the gun out. But anyway, so I have my G26 in here, which is also loaded. And I have this one with me. And also I have my, where do I put it? My 641, 640, the uh, Smith & Wesson, which is my 38 Special, which is really handy. I like the, uh, I do like this gun. It's uh, nice to carry. And it's the compact size of this. It, it's amazing how light this is and you can put it in your pocket. Um, obviously you kind of want to still have a holster in there, put it in your pocket. It's really nice, just lightweight. If you just need something quick, going for a walk in the neighborhood, just need something for immediate protection. This is a great gun. Anyway, brought these three guns out, my G19, G26, and the Smith 38. Just going to get some rounds on these, uh, with some generic ammo. Although this is, I'm shooting 38 special, uh, hand loads because I bought two boxes of 50, uh, last year when I first acquired this. And so, uh, I'm shooting hand loads now because it's just too expensive to buy factory ammo. Um, I haven't bought factory ammo uh, centerfire in quite some time. So anyway, reloading for this. I am reloading from nine again. I just re I retooled up, brought my turret press back online. I've been reloading some nine millimeter as of late, but I'm shooting factory ammo today. Just a Winchester white box, which is around here somewhere. Anyway, those are the three guns, uh, but let's go ahead and get those going. Since we're practicing with the CCW guns, I'm running it just as I would carry CCW and traditionally it's gonna be, or normally it will be my appendix carry. So I'm running, for the G19 I have an ACOG holster which is made for Haley Strategic Partners by G-Code. This is just their Eclipse model which is a single clip design. And uh, it works relatively well. I bought this a long time ago before I had an RMR on my G19 so I had to cut this out to to allow clearance for the armor, but this is what I'm running for the G19 for a Penix carry. I also have the same holster, uh, an ACOG Eclipse holster made by G-Code for the G26. And it works okay. Um, I think in general, most inside the waistband holsters, is, you know, just pistol only are relatively the same. Granted, there are a few nuances, like this doesn't have new hotness, which is what a lot of holsters have now is that wing. It's like that plastic deal that adds a pressure point on the side so that where the belt or the waistband compresses on that wing, it will bring the grip of the gun into the body more. So I might get a different holster for the G19 that has the wing so I can have that, that ability to bring the handle of the gun into the body. And then as far as the spare mag, I am using the G-Code Kydex mag holster. This is reversible so you can run it inside or outside the waistband. And I just run that as a standalone type deal. So I can still carry my guns without a spare mag, although I'm always I'm usually carrying a spare mag just for malfunctions. Uh, generally you won't need you won't need the extra rounds. I hate to say that. Um, but I mean usually what's if you're in a, most situations, you're just gonna need whatever is in, the, is in the gun, right? And mostly the spare mag is for if you have a malfunction, right? If you were to have a failure to feed or failure to fire, you know. Standard procedure is to drop mag, rack, and then insert a new mag. Or you can just do the whole tap, ray, tap rack bang thing, which I don't really like to do. But in a speed situation, I'm going to usually just drop mag, clear, load new mag. And that's going to get me out of, you know, most jams or failures to feed, failure to extract, or whatever. 
that's kind of just gross motor skills training or whatever. So that's why I like to have a spare mag. Anyway, um, so that's what I'm practicing with today, just mainly inside the waistband carry. And that's why I have these two or this kind of setup. And I've, I made this post on Instagram, uh, just kind of a story. So it just disappeared anyway. But, uh, I asked the question who sidecars without a sidecar holster. And if you don't know what a sidecar holster is, usually where the holster and the, the pistol and the mag, extra spare mag carrier are, are attached to one another. So they call that sidecarring. So I'm sidecarring right now, but with independent carriers. And I kind of like this setup because it's allowed me the flexibility where it'll move around on the waist a little bit for my body. And a lot of people prefer the kind of static where the pistol and the mag are kind of together in the same orientation all the time. And I can see that that adds consistency. So I'm still debating whether or not I want to get a sidecar holster. I'm thinking about getting one, but I don't know. Pretty much done shooting, but this is uh, one of my last targets shot with the 38. This is at 15 yards, which is pretty bad. And I'm actually, it's going left. You know, you got fixed irons on the Smith, so that's, you really can't do anything with that. So I have to kind of hold kind of right body, right side of body. Probably need to hold closer to the right edge maybe. Um, but I was pulling it left, and I think I missed one off paper actually when I was aiming here. So I was kind of holding here and I kind of got it in towards the center of the body. This is pretty bad. And you know, what are you gonna do with 38, you know, snub? You know, it's more of a close range emergency weapon or defense gun. And so, you know, you can't really put too much stock in this. But obviously you wanna be able to hit at distance with it. Uh, 15 yards is not that far. But uh, for qualifying in California though, because you have to qualify with your CCW guns and they actually have paper and you have to score it's basically shots on the target, right? You got to hit center mass. And uh, so you got to be wary of this when you're qualifying to make sure that you're holding right edge, or in this case, for these loads, I got to hold right edge if I want to be able to hit the paper at 15, center of the paper at 15. And I can't remember what our county is. I think it was like something like 5, 7 to 15, 3, 7 to 15. Um, it's not that very, it's not far. I mean, it's really easy uh, with most every other gun, especially with you got a red dot. It's like, Bring it simple, but uh, with the snub, you have to work on it. So I, I kind of have to practice with it and I hate shooting. To be honest, I don't really like shooting it. It's not a great target gun because that trigger is really heavy and it actually wears on your trigger finger. Like it, it kind of hurts after after maybe 20 or 25 rounds, the way it, it, it the ergonomics in the hand. So it's not the kind of gun you want to target shoot and you know, trying to shoot groups with it and ain't all that fun. Not like just your standard semi-auto pistols or a single action, double action type revolver single action if you can cock it and shoot it that's probably a lot better um, but not with that full double action which is pushing like 12 plus pounds anyway that's it for this target not much to look at just want to show it off that hey 
not that great with it. Um, things you got to deal with as far as that gun, but uh, I carry it. Um, it's fine at close range. Actually, I'll bring it up. Bring this start. Bring this camera with me. I don't think it's going to be in focus, but anyway, uh, you see it here. This is at uh, you know seven yards or whatever, and this is pretty easy with the 38. And as I'm aiming center, so you can see it's going left. Uh, I didn't really think it would be that much drastic though, going double the distance to 15, you know, seven to 15 yards. But uh, it's not that difficult to shoot. And this is just casually just you know pulling the trigger and not even really trying that hard. It's just more instinctively pointing and shooting. So it's pretty easy. That was my first shot, you know, of the day with the 38. You're just pulling it because you're just not remembering how how heavy that trigger is and after that you're pretty much on so close range 38 is really easy but when you go to the distance it's going to be a problem anyway let me go ahead and pack up and then uh we'll get cleaned up and wrap up this vlog about to get out of here it's, it's very uh, casual session here at the range just uh getting some pistol rounds down range uh really not much to say there kind of things going on right now uh so i've been shooting much to be honest since uh the last uh run through for the February Course of Fire, the match for the West End Gun Club will be this upcoming Sunday, February 27th. So if you're interested, go to our uh, page, the practice score page, and I'll put the link to the uh, SoCal NRL 22 website that I have, which gives you the FAQ and info regarding our matches, and plus a link to the practice score page to register. Put that in the video description. So if you're interested in shooting the NRL 22, come out and shoot it. Uh, should be some pl plenty of room, plenty of, plenty of slots available for people. Because uh, we're not really capped. Uh, projects, uh, non-work related projects like just gun stuff. I'm still waiting for a couple things to come in. And one specifically, I don't really want to say what it is because uh, I'd rather just wait till I make it a surprise. But I think it's maybe, they, according to the manufacturer, 10 to 12 weeks uh, manufacturing time. And I think I'm probably maybe four weeks only in. So maybe I'll have it in two more months. Who knows? But uh, eager to get that thing and uh, trying to shoot it, uh, get it set up, and we'll uh, try not to reveal too much about it. But because um, I really haven't mentioned it, I don't think in any vlog. But uh, interested in any of that. Still not sure if I'm going to build another gun this year. I mean, I I said I was going to build a Voodoo 360. I bought another ZC ZCO is uh, zero compromise optic, which is sitting on my CZ right now, and. I, I was going to get the 360, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it yet. Uh, don't really need to, but I'd like to do it. Uh, there's a lot of little things I want to try to make. I, I'm still thinking about a long action cartridge. Kind of want to do 300 PRC, even though I don't really shoot centerfire much. And I'd like to have a long action cartridge. I don't have one, like a rifle in the long action. So, um, Looking to get a new shotgun, kind of the M4 Benelli. I, I, Thought about getting one last year because there was plenty in stock, but now they're out of stock. And I'm thinking, man, I should have gotten it back then. So I don't know. Kind of want a semi auto shotgun. Um, yeah, not, nothing else really in gun wise. Uh, just been, you know, busy at work. Haven't really came out to the range to shoot since the run through the February course of fire. I have no idea what that chopper is. It's a helicopter echoing in the canyon here. Oh, it's up there. Um, so you're gonna hear that in the video. Uh, but anyway, uh, just really haven't had time to shoot, been doing other things outside of shooting, uh, work stuff, other personal stuff, non-gun related. So just really haven't had an opportunity. Um, the March Course of Fire did get released a couple days ago for the NRL 22. I was thinking about shooting it yesterday, but uh, good thing I didn't take the day off because one, it was raining and windy, two, we haven't shot our February match yet, so it's going to be kind of awkward because I have all the targets set up in the contest container ready to go just to lay it all out. I don't want to have to tear them all down just to, to do the March run through and then put the February course of fire back together. So that would have been kind of tedious. So that's why I didn't do it. Uh, but yeah, you might want to check that out. The March course of fire looks interesting. Um, I don't recall. There was, one st there was one stage with a bunch of props in one, so you're shooting like five different positions. Uh, but check it out. Uh, you should probably get some practice in right now because we're going into the last weekend of February. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, I need to, I mean, today is my personal day. Took a day off from work. Just came out here to, to get some practice in. Going to go run a few errands to just kind of relax with my day off. Anyway, again, 
West End Gun Club and Arnold 22 match, fourth Sunday of the month. It's coming up this weekend, February 27th. Uh, check out the link in the video description if you're interested in shooting. Um, that's it for today, Thursday, February 24th, here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.